So the last thing before we get on to our miscellaneous news, we would like to cover what if episode I think it's eight, eight or eight. eight. Yep. Eight. Which is Infinity Ultron or Ultron Infinite or whatever. Ultron wins. What if what Ultron, if, what if wins, Ultron yeah. won in his timeline and he was able to put his consciousness in Division's body and take over beat Jarvis? I said that this was probably the second best, if not the best episode yet. Yeah, it was really good. Uh, I was, I was... From, from a what if standpoint, amazing. And by yeah. the way, before we get started, I am not going to do a full breakdown of the episode. I think that's boring. I, I've been re-watching our podcast back and I almost want to skip through it myself when I'm going over it. So we're not going to do sure. a breakdown um, until I can afford buying the rights to like the clips and stuff. Um, yeah. I don't want it to break down. But I think from a what if standpoint, it was slightly better than T'Challa, which I said T'Challa and Doctor Strange so far, I've said have been the best from a what if standpoint, like what if this were to happen? I think right. T'Challa has been my favorite from that point. And I think it was better from that. And then I think from a story standpoint, the Doctor Strange one has been the best. And I think it competes with that, but it's not quite as good as the Doctor Strange story, which is why I put it at second best. But if you want to tell me that it was the best episode yet, I'm not going to fight you on it because it was that yeah. good. Yeah, it was really good. Um, part of that is because Ross Marquand, one of our guys we've mentioned one of our like favorites three episodes yeah. already yeah uh, he was the voice of ultron so he yeah. was, well, he voiced red skull in what if he yep. vo- he played red skull he was, in yeah and end game end game and now he voiced ultron so congrats yeah, or to infinity him. war infinity war and and end game he was in both yeah so he that's awesome very awesome talented we were huge <clears throat> ross marquand fans on this oh, podcast yeah. so uh, i think it's stands i think that's what you're supposed to stand now stands stand, you're not sebastian Seba- yeah, we're Sebastian Stans of Ross Marquand. Got it. Uh, yeah. Another thing, um, I don't want to take away from James Spader's voice. Because he is the only good part about that movie. Yeah. Yeah, he was... Remor- like His voice with Ultron was just perfect. Just perfect. Yep. Um, so, but Ross did amazing, as he always does. Uh, absolutely. I had a few takeaway from the episode. Basically, there were... The big thing that got talked about immediately was when so when ultron wins he kills everybody on the planet yep he launches all the nukes the only uh, assumedly assumedly is that a word assumedly i'm not uh, i'm gonna use it assumedly yeah. if you use it confidently nobody will question you assumedly uh that's totally 100 not correct uh but but assumedly assumptu- assumptuously don't give a shit, man. All right. <laughs> uh, Black Widow and Hawkeye survive because they're in a bunker or something. So um, the alive. main reason they survive is because they're who the story is focused around. Oh, plot armor. Yep. Got it. Got That's it. in plot my armor. opinion. They don't explain it. So yeah. Uh, if you're not going to explain it, I'm just going to assume they're flying. Why. They were flying. They were flying. I mean, yep. Sentinels can fly too, can't they? <laughs> Sentinels don't <laughs> exist. So... I'm just, I'm just saying, they, uh, it was plot armor. That plot, was got it. perfect. I am a, I am H O. Okay. Um, but yeah, so he destroyed the whole planet, and he feels like at peace. But then Thanos shows up, and this is what got talked about. Because Thanos shows up in the same way he shows up, like through the portal, and he's got the Infinity Stone with five stones. And then, <laughs> Ultron just looks at him and he goes, "Interesting." Slices him yeah. in half with the Mind Stone, and I was like, I was, I was, I was in my, I was, I was on like, the couch, oh and my I was god, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So he instantly kills Thanos, then takes the five Infinity Stones after melting the Infinity Gauntlet. Like, yeah. how powerful is Ultron? Like, it's insane. Yeah. Just which the, is like, the Mind Stone? Even just with the Mind Stone, he's able to melt the Infinity Gauntlet, which it, that that's pretty crazy. But then he puts them on, and realizes that there's a whole universe, yeah. a whole galaxy universe of planets he can destroy and then has the same mentality as thanos except instead of wiping out half the planet the half the life and he wants to wipe it all so he takes the five stones and like forms his own armor which is how he becomes like infinity ultron now instead of looking like vision he looks like ultron with vision inside the ultron mask yeah and he makes himself a cape similar to how vision had made himself a cape at that point and then he wins he destroys ego he destroys every planet xandar he goes to the sovereign he goes and they're all at the same the points in the movies. They're all at the same points in the movies where those planets are saved. Yeah, like the Guardians are fighting that giant worm thing. Yep. And except instead of winning, they get destroyed. And instead of Groot dancing and having fun, it's dark and dead. Yeah. 
and he blows up ego which means so this is what i wanted to talk about ultron is so so powerful he's he destroys a celestial he destroys a celestial he destroys ego he killed thanos even though he had five infinities he killed him so fast i think that was part of it thanos underestimated him but like killed thanos and then melted the gauntlet super powerful destroys a celestial super powerful and then captain marvel shows up does she, the whole like wanda to or no yeah, wanda to vision thing and like nukes him into the ground but goes she with pushes him. him into the planet core yeah and says Sandor, like, basically yeah, start, yeah starts, basically starts talking crap like she's winning like you need to stop now and she's like pushing his head off and he's like you've got spirit right <laughs> but then he just kind of smiles and he's like you've got spirit and then blows up everything including her yeah. which that planet exploded blue so people i saw the theory that that major explosion of the planet was him blowing her up with the power of an infinity stone because she she's the got power. the test she's got the tesseract energy in her in her yeah and so that was they people theorized that that blue energy because her planet the globe was blue was the tesseract energy exploding yeah the so, um he kills her uh, everyone from the initial blast, it was like a blue blast. Everyone, apparently a lot of people were like, it's Nova, it's Nova. Cause they're on Xandar. And I was like, they're not doing Nova yet, man. He will have his time, but he'll have it's his not time. now. But that was Captain Marvel going boom. Yeah. So then he says he feels at peace, but then he feels alone. But because there's no life in the universe, he can sense and hear and Uatu. see the yeah. watcher. Uatu. Yeah. Yeah, Which, when you hit a certain a certain kind of uh, power point, like there's a Supreme level of Strange. consciousness. Yeah, Supreme Strange had it too, where you, he hit this level of power and he could hear and see the Watcher too. Which so. this isn't really superhero related, but um, I like illusion and magic and stuff like that. I think it's fun to watch. There are many mentalists and hypnotists that say that there is a supreme consciousness that everybody has the ability to tap into, which is how they read minds and that everybody can train themselves to do so. That all they're doing, because like you and I are sending out messages right now that neither of us are paying attention to and right. can recognize because we can't tap into that level of consciousness because we haven't practiced that. Obviously, some people might be listening to this and be like, oh my God, this guy's insane. But they like, do that anyway. They probably do. Um, but I feel like that's it's also that like he's reached this supreme level of consciousness that with all the rest of the world gone, the only consciousness, other consciousness he can tap into is the watcher. True. So I thought that was really cool. The fact that he could see him, though, was very like, I think it just shows how strong he is. And his goal was to get to the watcher to find out. He's like, there's other places outside my universe, which is this whole thing. Right. He fights the Watcher. Yeah. Because he's able to break into the Watcher's dimension. Yeah. And which is kind of like this dimension that's outside of all of these universes. Right. You can see it's like a bunch of different fractals of almost looks like crystals geo, similar to like yeah. what um, Doctor Strange is stuck into, all those like yep. reflective surfaces is what he yeah. lives in. That's where it's like safe to do magic too, is inside of these like spheres. Or we, which, because he does that, they fight each other, and we get to see how powerful the Watcher is. Which is yeah, cool. when he all armors up, he puts himself in armor. He launches Vision, who has six Infinity Stones, and he's still not able to beat him. Then they start fighting through a bunch of different dimensions. Yeah, which is weird. Which is I don't know if you saw this, but there's a lot of ties that these could be like Star Wars dimensions. Like they're like two of the places they went to where he got launched either got launched into or they were fighting through looked exactly like star wars like places i mean it could be that could just be an easter egg it could be a yeah. tie-in yeah. in my opinion it's just like a little disney yeah. sucking itself off because they often do that i don't think it's anything to throw weight in however yeah, i don't one, think so either i think it's just it's i thought cool it was cool little. that steve rogers in one of the in, in one yep. of the universe uh, dimensions universes was getting sworn in as president yep that was pretty sick um i thought that was really cool just wanted to talk about that because it's been talked about so i don't need to go into details but that was really cool and then i believe in that that same universe uh ultron decides to take a bite out of it which looked just like galactus just like galactus it had to be it had to be like they didn't do that they did not do at, that on purpose at the minimum that is a shout out to galactus because he yeah. bites into the whole as a giant head that's it's, bigger yeah, than the it's whole exactly galaxy. like when 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 he who remains was explaining it he was like there's like there's like a pizza here and then there's a pizza here and a pizza here and it looked exactly like one of those swirlies where it's like that's a that's a place and ultron was biting into it he just from the watcher's dimension he was accessing that to be able to bite into the entire universe yeah 
it was very cool For, from a cinematic artistic standpoint that was awesome and I, from, I, again, instantly i was like that that looks just like galactus which i saw a couple people talk about it but i i also immediately thought that that was another example like just how powerful this is like we've talked about who's the most powerful being in the mcu that's currently been established infinity ultron yeah stronger than scarlet witch stronger than any any other person we've this seen. This is what the this is what the Age of Ultron should have been. What could have been? Could so. have been. This is in the in the comics. This is similar to what happened, except in the comics, Wolverine goes back in time, and Wolverine is the one to save them because he decides to. I can't remember exactly how he does it, but Wolverine goes back in time. Pulls a Days of Future Past and gets and saves back. the world. But um, they're not going to bring in Wolverine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yet. Not for this time around, at least. But yeah, I, I definitely want to talk about how powerful Ultron was and the Watcher. But he does, in in, in the end, kind of defeat the Watcher. Yep. He's about to get his head cracked open, but he summoned enough power to, like, uppercut Ultron and then escape through Portal or wherever he went. And then dimension. Ultron says he doesn't really care because now he can access the rest of the universes and is going to try to wipe out all life in all universes. And so the Watcher goes to Doctor Sh the Infinite Supreme Strange and his little geode and they're talking back and forth and supreme's basically saying are you ready to break your vow of not interfering of not interfering with any universes and help and they have a little bad factor he's like i need you to say it strange is like yeah i need you to say it because strange is still strange yeah and uh basically they're he's asking him for help and they're gonna for the final yeah, episode i mean our doctor strange is in there like you know our good doctor strange is in in right it's just he's strange part of a bunch of different yeah, he's not hundreds of demons yeah um but one thing i thought was really interesting there or a few things so from the trailer if you've been paying attention we all knew the season finale was going to be the watcher opening portals and bringing all these different yeah. things because that's been shown a million times so this is kind of they kind of spoiled the finale which is kind of weird but it's clearly all these different universes from the watcher all being brought to help defeat infinite yeah, Ultron. so you're gonna get you're gonna but get because they're strange. from a bunch of different dimensions i'm guessing there's gonna be a good amount of death <laughs> All right. I, yeah, I think there's going to be some dispensable heroes here and there. <laughs> that yeah, you're going to get I you got some pretty strange guys like Captain Carter, T'Challa. In the previews Star there's Gamora, Star-Lord yeah, Gamora T'Challa. Gamora with your armor. I've seen T'Char Lord, Captain Carter. Yup. And so except Captain strange. Carter in the trailer had a brand new UK captain. It's sure. like, like she's right. completely changed there but anyway i think you're gonna see all those another person that i thought that seemed very powerful was zola because they thought he'd be able to beat this ultron yeah from a mechanical standpoint yeah which i think that's a little thing they're showing that zola is alive in the mcu live universe as well so and because they're pushing hydra so much in all these shows i think we're gonna see zola come back yeah, I, I, was, I mean, he's not, he's never going to come back in person, but like he's he's in a computer system. A but he might come back in system. some sort of vision, like maybe he goes right. into white vision. Like you, you never know. Yeah. We could see Zola come back in a very strong way, so could be cool. But my big takeaway, which I also haven't, so here's why you watch this podcast. Like here's something that I thought about <laughs> that I've never seen. I haven't seen other people talk about. The Watcher took a vow, right? Vow that he would not interfere with other universes. A vow is something that you take from a leader standpoint. Like if you break that vow, somebody's there to punish you. Yeah. Who's the vow? Who is he taking yeah. the vow for? Who is above the watch? Because a watcher can has enough power to fight off somebody with six infinity stones and access multiple uh, dimensions, constantly watch. Like so he's above the celestials already. He's above who is he taking his vow for? And are they gonna bring that into the MCU at any point? And it's like that there's always a bigger fish there somebody is giving the telling the watcher or making sure the watcher doesn't step out of line right and yeah. i want to i want to know who that is because if you tell me who that is i want to see them come into it so i thought that was the most uh the biggest thing for me was he took a vow and i want to know who he took that vow for so i put down my my favorite things for them so steve rogers is president the level of power from ultron yeah and the watcher and zola yeah. I, thought so, those... yeah, I guess the one thing I'll add is the, uh... oh, I wanted to mention the, um, when Hawkeye sacrificed himself to save Nat and Zola. The it was slip of Infinity very, yeah, War was, game. Yeah, so I thought that was really cool. Clint Barton lost his arm, his, his yep. right arm, so yep. that got blasted off. 
because yeah. in that way he had the mechanical fingers that allowed him to line up like five arrows yeah. and shoot so, each boop, one boop, individually boop, boop, yeah. a lot more like the comics this was the best version of hawkeye we've had yeah. it's also which the best version of captain marvel we've had and it's, ultron it's crazy what happens when you can animate a show yeah. you can do so much so i'm excited to see this final episode i think it's going to be amazing um, I've seen a lot of positive reaction from this one. A lot of people are saying this is the best episode yet. Um, it's kind of, I think a big part of that is because it's showing the direction of the show. Like I originally yeah. thought that each season was going to take the continuation of each episode. Right. And it was a bunch of straight lines, but it's clear like these, this last episode tied all those lines together. Sure. And like I've been wanting the whole time, we get to see the Watcher. We get to see yeah. the Watcher's powers. We get to see what they're doing. I just, now I need to know where do he take that bow? Where, yeah. Who do you take that vow for? Because right. that's that's who I'm interested. In. I'm thinking it's a, it's just like when you hear a company make a decision, follow the money. Who are they making that decision for, and why? Right. Who? Why is he taking this vow? Who is he so sure. scared of if he breaks this vow? Like when Nat and Hawkeye are looking for Zola in that National Archives record, and he wants to show them where it is, but chooses not to tell them before Ultron finds him. Why is he so scared to help them? Like, why didn't he just right. help them? Because there's somebody that would punish him. Right. But yeah, and then I guess my other takeaway was the Galactus scene, and the so Galactus. The Galactus. So yeah. there were some awesome Easter eggs, awesome little clips from it, and uh, loved this episode. Very yeah, good. Great, great cinematography when it just oh, came to like this whole show has been. And I don't know if you've noticed this. But every episode, the Watcher has gotten closer. Yeah. In the first episode, he was just a silhouette, and then he got yeah. closer and closer. He's and basically the, right behind Nat and Hawkeye, like right there. It's right there. Yeah. Like and it's right except there. episodes. So in the leak of when episodes were coming out, seven and four, or whatever, seemed flipped. And in those episodes, he was in the wrong order of how close. Instead of getting closer and closer, he went doom, 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 like. Oh, really? So it was clear the episodes did actually get swapped. Got it. That would make more sense, too, if he did the Doctor Strange one right before this one. Because it's supposed to be Party Thor, or zombies, then Party, or zombies, zombie, Party Thor, and then zombies later. And he was I thought zombies way, was five. He was way but closer. Doctor Strange was four. Well, like, whatever. He was he was yeah, closer okay. when he was supposed to sure. be further. So. Got it. Yeah, thought that was cool. Um, cool. When we come back, we'll go over our miscellaneous section, and uh, then we'll send you all on your way. <laughs> 